Smith from America. Thank you. Welcome to EcoSummit. Thank you. So I'm Eric Smith. I'm one of the founders of Keystone Tower Systems. We've developed a new manufacturing process that enables wind turbine towers to, to grow to any size. Um, and if you've watched the wind industry over the years, you'll notice the, the one thing that's consistent is that the, the turbines get larger and larger every year. The, uh, the new Siemens machine that just came out within the last few weeks has a 130 meter rotor. <coughs> and this growth in size has been a big part of what has made uh, wind energy one of the lowest cost uh, power sources available today. The problem is our roads don't also grow. So uh, <coughs> uh, every year the turbines get bigger and, and, and the biggest size objects you can ship down the road, uh, that stays the same. Uh, turbines have already outgrown the largest size you could ship. Uh, so modern turbines today, if you were to put them on an optimized tower, they'd be uh, seven meters in diameter. The biggest thing you can squeeze down the road is, is uh, 4.3 meters. <coughs> and this is really forcing a, a change in tower design. Uh, <coughs> and so so the, the industry has a few options. Uh, today, none of, them are very, uh, none of them are very attractive. First, you can, you can just keep towers short. Uh, this is what's common in the US. Uh, you give up on the 40, 50% extra energy capture you could get if you were able to build an optimized height tower. Uh, the other is you, you take what should be a large diameter tower and you, f you just build it small enough that you can ship it. And in order to make it strong enough, you have to make the walls really thick. Uh, so this has been a common strategy for Vestas in Germany. They throw 200 tons of extra steel at the tower to make the walls thick enough to make them still strong enough and shippable. Uh, and then there were a few emerging technologies. Uh, uh, these half concrete towers really caught on in Germany, throwing hundreds of steel panels, th thousands of bolts at the problem has been another strategy. Uh, but these, these take weeks of assembly uh, and cost twice as much as welded steel towers would cost if you can make them the right size. <clears throat> so when we went after this problem, we, we looked around to other industries to look at how, how this is solved elsewhere. And, and the pipe industry actually has a, a great solution <clears throat> There's a, a, a fabrication process called spiral welding. It's a, it's a fully automated, continuous rolling and welding process. And when, when the pipe industry is faced with transport problems, they take these machines, they set them up out in the field, and they ship their steel as flat sheets using standard trucks. They roll and weld it where it's needed. <clears throat> uh, this has been around for decades, uh, but, but today it can only make, uh, until today, it can only make cylinders. And this is really where, where our technology comes in. Uh, we invented a variation on this process that's able to make tapered tubes. So now we can ship steel on standard trucks, roll and weld whatever size tower is needed at the site. Um, <clears throat> we've already built a, uh, built a prototype. You can see here this is a, a, a mo uh, our, our first scale model implementing the full manufacturing process. We've already been awarded a uh, patent uh, on the fundamental variations needed to produce tapered spiral welding. Uh, and this is the part where I'd show you a video of this pro uh, process working, but we can't have videos in this current system. So please come up to me afterwards if you want to see a video of our prototype running. <coughs> so once you have in-field production of towers, you can make them whatever size you want. It has a big impact on the wind industry. So if you look to the turbine manufacturers, uh, they're able to cut the cost of their most expensive component in half. So we're talking about saving 200 tons of steel out of a 470 ton tower. We're talking about uh, delivering it using standard trucks that are uh, 80 or 90 percent cheaper than the, the specialty transport and police escorts they're used today. Uh, and it's easy to integrate the, the, our towers are still welded tubular steel towers. These are the same types of structures that the industry has been designing for decades. Um, we just can make them the diameter that's needed today. If you look to the developers, uh, it doubles the available land where you can build wind farms. Uh, it, it really helps. Uh, there's a comment uh, earlier from the, the German group about wind expanding to lower wind speed sites. Once you can cost effectively build tall towers, uh, you can reach good wind at, at many more locations. Um, uh, between, uh, if you compare it to a short tower, uh, your know, overall project cost might be 10% higher, total capex but you're getting 40, 50% more energy out of the exact same turbine. If you compare it to today's expensive tall towers, you're looking at at least 10% uh, off the, the total capex of the project. So that's good for one to two uh, percentage points on IIR. Uh, and, and it and lets you build wind uh, in these higher value markets, bringing 
you know, the windiest sites are not where the load centers are. So it lets you build wind closer to where, where the energy is needed. <coughs> um, and then that all comes together. Uh, this, this gives Keystone a 50% cost advantage against other towers uh, in a, with almost a $10 billion uh, tower market today. Uh, this, the, the larger turbines, the taller hub heights, are a rapidly growing segment, and the industry is only going to get further and further to where it needs towers that are much larger than what can be shipped. Uh, and the tower is the component that's easiest to get into the turbine. It's, it's the component that's almost universally outsourced. It's the part of the turbine you can change without having to change the rest of the machine. <clears throat> so our team, our team was founded by uh, uh, three mechanical engineers out of, uh, out of MIT. Uh, between the three of us, we have eight MIT degrees between us. Uh, we've since brought in a lot of industry expertise. Um, so my, my background, I, I spent several years vetting new technologies for VCs who wanted to get into the wind industry. Uh, Chris worked at a, a different wind startup, working on uh, expanding into the global markets. Uh, Mike <coughs> spent 14 years at Vestas designing uh, towers, uh, and he's, he's leading up uh, our work with them, integrating this new design into their towers. And he also, as previous, uh, previously when he was at Vestas, uh, worked on their integration with what is today the market-leading 140-meter uh, tower in Germany. Um, so where we're at, uh, uh, we've, we've developed the design, we've validated the economics, we've built the first small-scale implementation of the manufacturing process. Uh, we're doing the structural testing now. The first samples just came back and we're exceeding uh, Eurocode Class A excellent quality for, for buckling strength. Um, and we've begun the, the, the detailed integration for the full-scale systems. So, so like I said, we're, we're working with uh, Vestas and DNV on integration with their three megawatt platform, working with some of the other top European turbine manufacturers. Uh, we're working with some of the top developers, including Iberdrola, to plan these projects into their, uh, their construction efforts and, and look at all of the integration issues associated with in-field production. Um, and, and we're sort of, we're really, we're, we're pinning down all of the details of what it's going to take to scale up. Uh, right now, uh, we're raising a, a round, let's see, I know it in dollars, $8 million. Uh, we've got about half of that uh, in place today. Uh, that's to build the first full-scale implementation of the manufacturing process. Uh, and it's also to help us uh, establish our European presence. So that's, that's part of why I'm here today. Um, and uh, Germany, Sweden are really the leading adopters for these high hub uh, towers, and we expect many of our early projects will be there. Uh, and so I'm here to make connections. Uh, and, and we'd also like, since we want to establish a European presence, uh, bringing in European investors as we close out this round would be, would be great. Um, Follow-on would involve building out the rest of the mobile fabrication facility uh, and, and doing the first full-scale infield demonstration and, and then demonstrating this process uh, can produce a 140 meter tower at a rate of about one a day. Um, uh, yes, and so so what we've got is uh, uh, a, a variant on a proven manufacturing process. We've got uh, a demonstration that that our innovation works, that it enables spiral welding to come into the wind industry, uh, and we've got uh, serious traction designing this into the the wind system. Um, so, uh, with that, I welcome your questions. <clears throat> Great. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. Do you have a question for Eric? How long does it take to manufacture a tower on site? And how does that compare to a normal manufacture, a yeah. normal installation on site? So, so we're rate matching installation. So, uh, for these, these larger machines, you'd like to be able to reach uh, uh, installation at a rate of about one to two a day. Uh, so, so our spiral loading process can produce a 140 meter tower at a rate of about one a day. So spiral mills can produce about 10 tons an hour. We can get a 140 meter tower in for uh, 270 tons or so. Um, <clears throat> that's not to say that uh, you, know, you roll on site and 24 hours later the first tower comes off. We have a number of secondary operations, flange installation, coatings, and so on. Uh, so, but but the rate of production is, is uh, one a day to match uh, installation. Uh, I'll say also installation for us is significantly faster than the other tall towers. Uh, we're able to produce, we're no longer limited to the sizes you can ship down the road. We're only limited by uh, crane capacity. So we can do a 140 meter tower in, in four sections. So that's only four lifts. Compare that to other steel towers. You're at at least seven sections. 
compare that to hybrids, you're at more like uh, 40 sections. What, what will be your, your revenue per tower? Our revenue per tower is, uh, so we can hit about 20% margins if we're selling at 800,000 uh, euros a tower. 800,000 with a 20% margin. Yeah. How many towers do you want to sell in the next 10 years? In the next 10 years? Uh, let's see. So each operation can do about 200 towers a year. Uh, market can support 10 operations or so, but there'll be, of course, a, a, a ramp up. Wow. That sounds like big numbers. I like Big it. numbers, yeah. Let's have a beer. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, beer break. Half an hour. Thank you.